Enter Payroll Service Transactions. If you're using an outside payroll service, like Paychex Payroll Services or ADP Payroll Services, for example, and you would like to enter those transactions into your checkbook in MaxTrax, we recommend using the following process. From the toolbar, click the right check icon and select the payroll service company. Double click or highlight the name and click select. Make sure the correct bank account is selected above. In most cases, the payroll company will draft the payroll amount out of your company checking account electronically and then the payroll service will auto-deposit your employee's net pay into their bank accounts automatically and handle the taxes. However, we're going to look at a scenario where some of your employees may receive their paycheck via direct deposit and other employees still receive a printed check from the payroll service company drawn upon your checking account. Uncheck the To Be Printed checkbox in the upper right corner and notice the check number field below now becomes active. I typically enter EFT here for electronic funds transfer in the check number field since Paycheck automatically takes this money out of my bank account on payday. I've also seen the acronym ACH entered here as that may be what the payroll auto withdrawal is labeled on your bank statement. Tab and enter the date the funds are actually withdrawn from the account and tab, tab. Enter the amount that is taken out of your bank account referencing your payroll service statement. Let's say for an example, $5,905.50 and tab. I typically enter the pay period in the memo field. And tab. And here is where we're going to enter the various disbursements for this electronic debit. The first disbursement is already posted below. The amount of the auto withdrawal taken by paychecks from our bank account. Next is the total gross wages posted to the 60000 expense account. Tab and the amount of $7,000. You can break out your wages into separate expense accounts like wages salary, wages hourly, commissions, or flat rate, but I just group all my wages together into the 60000 account and click OK. Next, we enter the payroll service expense. Click the Add Disbursements button and I'll enter account 61100 and hit tab. This account is named Consulting Other, but I'm going to edit the account description first. Click Select. With the account highlighted, click this Edit button down here, and I'm going to call this Expense Account Consulting Payroll Service. Click OK, then Select, enter the amount, $50, and OK. Now this expense should be on the other side of the ledger in the debit column. Expense accounts typically start with the number 6 which are debit accounts and if we want the expense to increase these amounts should be showing up here in the debit column. Just double click on the disbursement line, re-enter the amount and click OK. And click OK. The disbursement amount should now be on the correct side, in the debit column. The figures I'm entering here would be coming from the report from your payroll service. They will list a breakdown of the amounts being withdrawn from your bank account. Next, your report would list the payroll expenses. Let's start with Social Security. Click Add Disbursement, Enter 60510, Tab for FICA, which is my Social Security on my general ledger. If you did not know the account number to make the disbursement to, just type the number 6 and scroll to the correct account. Enter the amount, 434, and click OK. Again, wrong side of the ledger, so double click, re-enter 434, and click OK. Let's enter Medicare 
click Add Disbursement. I'll just type the number 6, click Select, and I'll scroll down to Medicare. 60520. Click Select and enter the amount and OK. Wrong side, so double click and re enter 10150 and click OK. Remember, the employee contribution of Social Security and Medicare is coming out of their pay along with their state and federal income tax withholding. Out of this amount up here, wages, salary, and paychecks is paying that to the government for us from this amount of 590550 from our bank account. FUDA, Federal Unemployment Tax, is next. 60430, tab. 42 even, and click OK, double click, enter 42 again, and click OK. Next is SUDA, State Unemployment Tax, 60440, $378, click OK, let's re-enter again. On the correct side now. Maxtrax does this automatically as it's always trying to balance out the transaction. Maxtrax just doesn't know we have a bunch of disbursements here. Now as I said, most of the net payroll checks are auto deposited into each employee's bank account. But in this scenario, we'll say that we have two employees who actually receive their net pay with a printed paper check from Paychex. We need to take that amount of those paper checks out of this transaction and hold that amount to the side in what we call an accrued payroll account. Click Add Disbursements, enter 23530 and tab. Enter the total of the paper payroll checks from your report, 1750, tab, and click OK. Now this entry is on the credit side because a liability accrual account is a credit account, so that is making the amount go up in that account. We will enter those two paychecks after we're done with this entry, relieving that accrued payroll liability account in just a moment. We have a little more left over to disperse, and these amounts, like the paper payroll checks, will need to be written out of our bank account by us as well, but we write the checks, not paychecks. We have a garnishment that needs to be paid to the state for child support on a monthly basis. That is accruing in its own account, 23540, for $150. This dollar amount has been deducted from that employee's net paycheck. Last, we have some health insurance premiums from a few of our employees' paychecks that will be deducted from our company expense account for health insurance. Notice. This is an expense that is being credited because the employee's contributions are reducing our company's expense for paying that health insurance premium. So it's correct in the credit column. There's one more scenario I've seen payroll services do, and that is to split this auto debit into two transactions, one for the net pay and processing fees, etc., and the other for taxes. If that is the case in your shop, just accrue those tax amounts for the payroll tax contributions from the employer and the employee's tax contributions from their paychecks into the payroll tax accrual accounts, liability accounts, typically starting with the number two, and then enter the second auto debit, just like this transaction, but dispersing that auto debit to those tax accrual accounts. If any of these general ledger accounts are not made up ahead of time, you can always create them on the fly from this Add Disbursement button. Click Select, and then click the Add GL Account button down here and create the new account. Once this payroll service electronic debit is all set, click the Memorize checkbox in the upper right corner, and the next payroll transaction, written out to Paychex, will remember all of these disbursements, thank goodness. Just change the check amount and edit each of the disbursements down here to match your payroll service report. 
Now remember, we have two more checks to enter, the two paychecks that the payroll company issued to our employees without auto deposit that are accruing in this 23530 accrued payroll account. Click Post Check and select Post and Close. Once again, click Right Check on the toolbar. I'll check the box to show employees first and then uncheck these two boxes to narrow down my list. The first check is for Paul Bartlett. Select. See, I had memorized box check last time I wrote a check to Paul. Notice down here, this check is already dispersed to accrued payroll for his paycheck. Now I just need to edit the check amount up here, and the disbursements change automatically. Uncheck the To Be Printed checkbox since this check was already printed by Paychex, and I'll enter the check number from the actual check generated by Paychex coming out of our bank account. I need to change the date to the 9th and click Post Check and Post and Close. Once again for Brett Christensen, double click on his name and enter the check amount, tab, tab. The check is dispersed to 23530, accrued payroll, click OK. Again, I'll uncheck the To Be Printed box and check the Memorize box so MaxTrax remembers this new employee's check disbursement to accrued payroll. Enter the check number, change the date, and click Post Check and post and close. Our last check would be to pay that garnishment that we're accruing to the 23540 garnishment account on our general ledger. Done the same way that we wrote these other two paychecks. Just disperse to the appropriate account and post. But I pay that garnishment remittance only once a month, so I'm not gonna need to do it this week. If you did not remember what else was accruing and what account that accrued amount was being held in, just reference that Paychex electronic debit that you entered. Click Banking on the menu bar. Select View Check Register. Select the bank account. And double click on the check or highlight the check and click the Edit button down here. And you can see what went where and for how much. And this concludes the lesson on Enter Payroll Service Transactions.